I hope you all are doing well. We are back again with another part of Chapter 6 Life Processes Class 10th. In this part 3, we are going to cover the topics what is respiration, the types of respiration and the human respiratory system. And if any of you have not yet watched the first and second part of this series, the respective links are given in the description box. You all can go and check those out. What exactly is respiration? If we talk about it in general, it is the process of releasing energy from food. This energy is released in the form of ATP that is adenosine triphosphate by breaking down a 6 carbon complex molecule of glucose into simpler substances. We often get confused between the terms respiration and breathing. Yes, they both are completely different things. They are somewhere connected with each other, but we can't take them as synonyms of each other. When we inhale and exhale the air, it is termed as breathing. We can take charge or control this process. That means it is a voluntary process. While respiration is an involuntary process that occurs within ourselves. The difference between both of them are mentioned here. Respiration is the process of breakdown of glucose to produce energy, while breathing is the process of inhaling and exhaling the air in and out of the lungs. Respiration takes place in the cells and breathing takes place in the lungs. Respiration is a chemical involuntary process while breathing is a physical voluntary process. In respiration, energy is released in the form of ATP. While there is no release of energy during the process of breathing. Respiration is an intercellular process as it occurs inside the cell. While breathing is an extracellular process as it occurs outside the cells. Now respiration can further be classified into two types that are aerobic and anaerobic respirations. Aerobic respiration is in which oxygen is utilized. Anaerobic respiration is a respiration which takes place without oxygen. Aerobic respiration produces considerable amount of energy for use by the organism which gets stored in ATP molecules, while anaerobic respiration produces much less energy which gets stored in ATP molecules. Aerobic respiration generally occurs in the mitochondria of the cell, while anaerobic respiration occurs mostly in yeast and bacteria and sometimes in our muscle cells also. The first step that is common in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose into pyruvate. Glucose is a 6 carbon molecule C6H12O6 and pyruvate is a 3 carbon molecule C3H4O3. This process occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, after the conversion of glucose into pyruvate, there can be three possibilities of further breakdown of pyruvate. If we first talk about anaerobic respiration, in yeast, in the absence of oxygen, pyruvate breaks down into ethanol, which is a two carbon molecule, and carbon dioxide and a small amount of energy is also released. When there is a lack of oxygen in our muscle cells, lactic acid and a small amount of energy is released. But on the contrary, in anaerobic respiration, this process occurs in mitochondria and the products formed are carbon dioxide, H2O and there is a la large amount of energy released in comparison to the anaerobic ones. 
Now, a question arises that why do we face muscle cramps after running or doing vigorous exercises? We just read and understood what happens while there's a lack of oxygen in our muscle cells. During running or doing uh, vigorous exercises, the energy demand from the muscle cells increases. This is compensated by anaerobic respiration and lactic acid is formed in the process. The deposition of lactic acid causes pain in the muscle cells. How this exchange of gases occurs in different organisms? Since the entire cell of a unicellular organism stays in contact with the environment, so it is easier for them to exchange substances including gases. Diffusion is the method which is utilized by unicellular and some simple organisms for this purpose of exchange of gases. In plants, diffusion is utilized for exchange of gases. In complex animals such as humans, respiratory system does the job of exchange of gases. Talking about the aquatic animals, fishes in specific, gills are the respiratory organs for them. Fishes take in oxygen which is dissolved in the water through gills. Since availability of oxygen is less in the aquatic environment, so the breathing rate of aquatic animals is faster. Insects have a system of spiracles and tracheae which is used for intake of oxygen. Terrestrial organisms such as humans, horses, dogs, etc. have developed lungs for exchange of gases. Since there is abundant oxygen concentration in the environment as compared to the underwater, breathing rate is slower in compared to what it is in fishes. The human respiratory system is an organ system responsible for inhaling of oxygen and ex exhaling of carbon dioxide, exchange of gases to be specific. It is composed of a pair of lungs. These are attached to a system of tubes which open on the outside through the nostrils. Following are the main structures in the human respiratory system. The primary respiratory organ are the nostrils. The inner lining of the nostrils is lined by hair and remains wet due to the mucus and the hair help in fil filtering the dust particles out from inhaled air. Further, air is warmed up when it enters the nasal passage. Then comes the pharynx which is a tube-like structure that continues after the nasal passage, following the larynx, which is called the voice box. Trachea is the medical name of windpipe. It is the largest airway in the respiratory system. Cartilaginous rings are present in trachea, which prevent the collapse of trachea in the absence of air. A pair of bronchi comes out of the trachea with one bronchus going to each lung. Each bronchus divides into bron branches and sub-branches inside the lungs which are called bronchioles. Alveoli are the air sacs present at the end of bronchi bronchioles. This is the organ where real exchange of gases occurs. Alveolus is composed of a very thin membrane and is the place where blood capillaries open. This is alveolus where oxygen mixes with the blood and carbon dioxide exits from the blood. Now we are done with the topic respiration too. I hope you understood each and everything very well. Drop your suggestions and queries in the comment section below and if you like this video then please like share and subscribe to our channel see you next time